You're listening to the Small Business Talk podcast with Kathy Smith, episode 88. Small Business Talk is a podcast for business owners and entrepreneurs who want a better way to run their businesses without spending years doing it the hard way. Small Business Talk is hosted by Kathy Smith, who has run the same marketing agency for more than 17 years and helped hundreds of business owners achieve their marketing goals. How's business going? It's been a really weird year for everybody, and I hope that you're coming to the end of your pandemic lockdown or things are just getting back to normal. At the time of recording, early October, we've got three months of 2020 left. So we really do need to rock it. We need to make the end of this year the best it possibly can. Let's put behind us what has happened and let's move forward and make plans to actually make it happen for the end of the year. You see people who were saying, put up the Christmas tree and let's forget 2020. But really, we've got three months left, just under 90 days, take out Christmas, 80. So at the very least, 70 days. What can you do in the next 70 days? So let's talk about leads. Is your business actually bringing in leads? Do you have a plan to bring in leads? Or are you doing wish and hope marketing? Not a very good way to run your business. Getting your business found by your ideal customers can be hard, but it doesn't have to be. The internet is a noisy place and attracting your perfect customer is a complex task of part science, part positioning, part customer love, and part luck. And to get that balance exactly right for your situation is critical. For your business to grow and thrive, you need a constant flow of qualified leads that are interested in your business solution, month in and month out. Your marketing should be making you money and attracting more customers to your business. But with all the shiny objects, the endless social media options, and the constant emails offering you this service and that, who do you trust? What should you do? Where should you start? Who do you believe? Your business and many others like you are the backbone of your local economy, and marketing local business has been the same process for decades. Find people who have your pain point and the problem that your business solves. Show them your solution and let them buy it. Every business is different and marketing strategies used for each are different too. So if you're thinking about a cafe, the way that you would approach that is quite different to if you were a computer reselling business. But no matter what your business is, the process is the same. And a lot of businesses fail because they don't have an audience of qualified leads, of people that trust them that know that the solution to their problem is available whenever they're ready to buy it. Did you know that many businesses fail in the first year? And by the fourth year, 40% of businesses have failed or closed their doors. The survival rate of businesses gets better as the size of the business increases. And why do businesses fail? Well, generally because of cash flow, late payments, lack of sales, or lack of qualified leads. I've been in business for almost two decades now, and small businesses not getting enough leads, qualified leads, and generating sufficient sales to thrive is something that I've seen over and over through my marketing journey. There are many ways to get leads, however, not all leads are created equal. And without a plan, a detailed marketing strategy, your marketing budget can blow out and not achieve results at all. But you need leads. You need qualified leads to make your business grow year after year. Your marketing should be making you money, not just another business expense. So where do you start? We have to start by thinking about who your ideal customer is. And marketing to everybody is marketing to nobody. We've all seen those ads where you think, gee, they get me. They're in my head. They know my exact problem. That's because they're talking just to you. They're not talking to you, your sister, your mother, your husband, your family, your partner, whatever. They've narrowed down that their ideal audience is someone 
just like you. Now, people say if you niche too tightly, then you'll lose everybody else. Well, generally not really, because once you start talking to somebody directly, then other people that are interested that are a little bit outside that circle also say, yeah, that's almost me. And then the circles grow. But if you're talking to everybody, then nobody gets you. Nobody thinks that you understand their problem. So therefore, it doesn't work unless you're somebody like Walmarts or Audi or one of those, where they're just looking at volume and it's the lowest cost. And as most people in business know, that just dealing on price, it's a race to the bottom. So unless you've got that massive volume going through and you've got that delivery process set up so that it can be as cheap, as cheap, as cheap, then you're not going to win that race. So you have to actually talk to your customers and really nail down that niche so that you're only talking to that one specific person. Think about Facebook. That's how Facebook started. It was only one university. Once they got that sorted, then they expanded to another university and another university. And then, of course, we know the rest is history. And all the big brands have started like that. They've just had one ideal customer, one type of customer, and then they've expanded it out. So where do you start with getting leads? Well, you've got three things you need to do. You need to create that awareness, get exposure, be visible to your ideal customers and show them that you have the solution to their problem. Then you need to elevate. So you need to educate and nurture your prospects to show them that you are the expert and the one that can be trusted. Nowadays, you've got less than three seconds to attract that person. So sometimes it will take multiple hits before that they say, yes, you're the person for me. Yes, I'm interested. Or yes, it's the right time for me to be buying now. Unfortunately, these days we have attention spans less than a goldfish. So you need to keep getting in front of people. Anything between 7 to 20 touch points before they'll buy. And then you need to connect with the person. You need to ask them, would they like to buy your product? And it's not all the icky sales things. It's just, you have this problem. I have this solution. Maybe we're a good fit. Why don't you buy? And people love to buy. They don't like to be sold to, but they do like to buy. So these three factors are really important. Create, elevate, and then connect. Now, social media is a wonderful platform, and on this podcast, I've spoken about it a lot of times, but you do need somewhere to house all your content. You do need somewhere for people to go back to and somewhere that they can search. So you do need to have a really good website, and having it just look pretty is not going to help Google search. So think about what you need to be doing with that. So your keywords and just running Facebook or paid ads to somewhere is not a long-term strategy. Think about what your website is, how it's going to look, and a couple of boost ads is not going to get you there. Customers also expect you to have a website. Real businesses have websites. That's what people think. So rightly or wrongly, that is the perception. So if you don't have a really good, robust website, then you've already lost that part of the game already. Websites can build rapport with people before you even meet them. They can make it feel for them like they know you. They can trust you. We buy from people, brands and websites that we trust. Social media platforms are an important part of your digital branding. However, they shouldn't be the only part of your digital branding. Your website is where your digital home needs to be. So make sure that you are utilizing that prime real estate. Make sure that your domain name actually says what your business is, what it should be. So whether it's your actual brand name, which is always a good thing. And if that's not possible for whatever reason, then think about how people would be searching and what they would be looking for and make it easy If it's too complicated or if it's got words in it that people can't spell, then once again, you've lost your points and you lost your game again. Now, you only get one chance to make a first impression, so make sure that that first impression is good. Bill Gates said that content is king way back in 1996, and it's still just as relevant today. So you need to make sure that your customers can understand what you're selling 
what the solution to their problem is. And sometimes they even spell out their problem because they may not always realize. It's like going to a doctor and you're going, mm, not feeling well, not quite sure why. They ask you what your symptoms are and then they say, oh, it could be X, Y or Z. And we have A, B and C to fix it. So sometimes you need to be that bit of a doctor as well to help your customers. So now you've got your website sorted, you need to be elevating your potential customers and prospects. You need to be educating them. So just like I said, sometimes you need to give them that bit of information to what their problem is to help them out. Give them a little taste. Sometimes they want to download an ebook or listen to a video, a podcast, something like that so that they can hear you, see you, make sure that you are the right solution. Because as we know, there's nothing worse than hitting that buy button and having buyer's remorse. So make sure that you do give them a little bit of a taste test so that they can have a go first. If you're buying a car or anything like that, you want to drive it around the block first. So we all like to have that little bit of a taste. You go up to a a food mall and sometimes they'll give you a little treat before you actually buy your main meal. So we do like to taste and online is nothing different. Now this is where you can incorporate your social media really well because you can run posts on your social media that is giving them your expertise. You can lead them back to your YouTube channel or your podcast or better still back to your website where you can house it all. You can show them the downloads that you've got for them, the checklists, the things that can really help. And then of course that's a great way to get their email. So then you can talk to them by email. Email is still a really good way to market to people, even though our inboxes are flooded with stuff. If it's something you're interested in and someone you've been talking to or listening to and been researching, then you're more likely to open those emails. So don't forget that emails are a great way to talk to your people, but you must have their permission. So you must have had them download something with an express box that ticks to say, yes, I'm happy to agree to your terms and services and that you must be saying there that you will be contacting them. And if you've got a list from somewhere else, so you've done a campaign previously or you've got a different business or you're in a networking group, that sort of thing, that is not express permission. So you need to make sure that you are getting express permission before you go and market to those people, before you try and educate them on your solution to their problems. So think about that trip to the doctor. We're happy to go along to a GP to get a bad cold sorted or an undiagnosed illness. However, when it comes to something more serious, we want to get a referral to a specialist. The specialist that you are looking for is the person that specializes in the disease that you have, not any other disease. Yet, often we do not treat our businesses as seriously especially when it comes to marketing on social media. The classic case I see is when a business owner throws up a few posts here and there with no purpose, no strategy. They post a lot of posts in succession and then nothing. Crickets for weeks, even months. What you had for your lunch, your pet cat, what your children's achievements are, these sort of things all belong on your personal profile, not your business page. And why do you think that Facebook has grown to be such a large part of everybody's life? It's connection. So the one big mistake that I see on Facebook in particular is that people only post sales copy on their business pages. They don't try to make that connection with everybody. And connection, like I say, is not just what I had for lunch or what my children are doing. This sort of thing can be great in dispersed to give some sort of personality, but you need to be thinking about how you are helping your potential customers, how you can educate them, frequently ask questions, things like that, and of course, always leading back to your website. The other problem that I see, and especially on Facebook and social media, is people then don't ask for the sale. They've done all the pre-work, they've identified the problem, They've created the awareness, they've elevated and nurtured so that people know what they're talking about and know that they're the right solution. Then they forget to do the connect. They forget to actually ask 
or give your potential buyers an opportunity to buy. So remember that you do need to make it easy for somebody. If it's too hard, they'll hit that back button, they'll swipe away and they'll go on to the next solution. And as you know, our news feeds everywhere we go is full of options for them. And once they start looking on Google and start researching your product or service or something similar, then of course Google's going to offer them up other solutions. So do remember to give them a way to buy. And the other thing is let them have a phone number. Let them call you. There's nothing worse than having a problem and then not being able to call. Recently, I tried to call one of my suppliers, one of the the big ones that you have to have. Their phone message says, I know if you are calling us, you need some help. We are prioritizing our most important customers. We have sent you a text SMS so that you can follow our online help service. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Well, obviously, I was ringing them. I didn't want to follow their online service as I'd already tried that. So that is not a good customer service experience. And if that's how you were treating your customers, they'll just go somewhere else. So make it easy for them to talk to you and to buy. So having a robust plan for your marketing, a step-by-step of what you're going to do, including your social media posts, just makes it so much easier. You don't get up on Monday morning and think, oh dear, what am I going to post this week? You actually have a plan. And that's what's going to make the difference in these next 90 to 70 days. So if you like this kind of content, I've got a free ebook for you. And it's called Lead Amplification Framework. So if you would like that, just jump on my website. So my other website, Catco End. So C A T C O E N T dot com dot AU forward slash plan and you can get all of this content and more about how to actually make yourself a proper marketing strategy, marketing plan, marketing framework that you can use for the next 70 days so that 2020 won't be a complete write-off for your business. So you will be able to salvage the rest of this year and make sure your business is thriving and that you are actively looking for leads for people that want to deal with you, not just the ones that are chasing the lowest prices or the who can do it for not an arm and a leg, that sort of thing. That's not where you want to play. You want to add value and you want to make sure that your customers are happy. So until next week, take care. Don't forget to subscribe to Small Business Talk podcast and head on over to smallbusinesstalk.com.au forward slash downloads for all the show notes and links to this episode. Remember, to be great, you must start. Pick one tip from today's episode, take action and implement it. Let's meet again next week at the same time and place. Until then, take action and SBT community, enjoy your journey.